Hello and welcome back to another video. <laughs> Today's topic is comparing swimming versus running versus cycling. Oh my god, here it comes. <laughs> Let the battle begin. Let the flame wars begin. <laughs> just wait. Just relax. It's a friendly contest. We're not here to insult anybody, okay? And if it makes you feel better, I do all three. I'm a cyclist, I'm a runner, and I'm a swimmer. And I've been doing all three of these disciplines for many, many years. I first started out as a cyclist actually. When I was really young, when I was a really young kid, I would bike everywhere. Bike to school, bike with my friends, bike to the 7-Eleven to get some Slurpees. I spent my whole youth riding a bike everywhere. All right, so I know a thing or two about cycling. So don't worry, okay? I'm not here to insult you if you're a cyclist. If you're a swimmer, guess what? I'm a swim coach, okay? I've been swimming for more than 10 years, way beyond 10 years, and I've been coaching people from all sorts of backgrounds. And if you wanna know more about our group, click the link below. So I know a thing or two about swimming, okay? And when it comes to running, well, I've been running in many kinds of sports. For example, baseball, for example, soccer, for example, basketball, for example, wrestling, for example, boxing. All of these disciplines incorporate running into the regimen, okay? Because you need some sort of cardio to improve your stamina. So I know a thing or two about running, all right? Which is the best out of all three? Well, it depends on uh, what you find value in. I've broken it down into five categories when comparing all three of these things. And the categories are one, affordability. How cheap is it to start this sport or how expensive it is? Second would be learning curve. How easy it is to learn it or how difficult is it to learn? Third category will be the long term, okay? Can we do this for five years? Can we do this for 10 years? Can we do this for 15, 20 years on words, all right? How long can we keep this? discipline up. Fourth would be the results, okay? Which burns the most calories? Which gets the most results in the shortest period of time? Hopefully in under an hour or I can get shredded and cut and looking good and build up my stamina. Yeah, yeah, results. And the fifth and final component would be the sexiness factor, okay? Which is the sexiest out of all three sports? <laughs> which is the most fun to brag about? I'm a swimmer, I'm a I'm a runner, I'm a cyclist, okay? Well, these are very important things to consider, especially this last category. So let's dive into it, okay, shall we? So let's get started. Let's talk about the first factor, affordability. Now, out of all three of these, swimming, running, cycling, which is the most affordable? Well, obviously, when you look at it on paper, running is the cheapest, okay? Because all you need are a good pair of running shoes, just some like a t-shirt, shorts, and then you just go running, right? Extra things you can add on top are some sunglasses to block out the sun and an MP3 player just to relieve the boredom. So if you wanna know a good pair that I recommend, uh, click the link below and I'll show you a really good pair. It's a portable MP3 player that I use for both swimming and running. It's waterproof and you could run with it. Running is the cheapest, duh. What comes in second place? When it comes to swimming versus cycling, I would say swimming is a lot cheaper. When you think about it, all you need is like jammers, goggles, a swim cap, and then you gotta pay your like daily entrance fee to the pool, okay? And the daily entrance fee is like three to four dollars, okay, every time you, you drop in for a session. But if you need a kickboard, most pools provide that. If you need like, I don't know, like a life jacket or a flotation belt, most pools at your community center will provide that for free. The most expensive thing long-term will be that daily drop-in fee that you have to pay in order to access a swimming pool. Now compare swimming to cycling. How much does it cost to cycle? Well, the cheapest way to cycle is to just rent a bike. Right? You go to a, a bicycle shop nearby and then you rent a bicycle for the day. And here in Vancouver, I rent a bicycle for like $10 an hour. If you're gonna do this on a daily basis, if you wanna do this long term, you're gonna have to invest in a bicycle, right? And how much are bicycles? They're pretty expensive. <laughs> when I was growing up, all of my friends, we would like drool and salivate over the latest bicycle gear. And what was the hottest bicycle gear back then? and still is today, Shimano. My friends all wanted to upgrade their crappy, shitty bicycles, and they all wanted Can we all wanted Cannondale bicycles because 
Cannondale was like the Rolls Royce of bicycles. It still is, and Cannondales are very expensive. Shimano is very expensive. When you get into the cycling world, on top of getting a bicycle and then you gotta get your helmet, your, your sunglasses, and then you, the, the clothing that they wear. Not only that, you need to invest in driving somewhere. A lot of people don't factor this in. When you have a bicycle and you wanna go on a trail, you gotta take the bicycle to that trail. So that involves mounting your bicycle onto your car and then driving to that park, wherever it is. So you gotta factor in that, so you need to get a mount for your car. You gotta take that bicycle to that trail and then you can start cycling. Getting a bicycle doesn't stop there. Guess what, all of my friends that were heavily into bicycles, they, and cycling, they lost a lot of money. They spent a lot of money on gear, right? It just never ends. I mean, once you, once you go down that path, it's just like photography, you know? If you're a photographer, you know what I'm talking about. Once you buy one lens, it doesn't stop there. You just wanna get the next best lens and then the better camera gear and then the better and better and better. You just, it just never ends. Out of all three, the most affordable is running. Second, swimming. And third is cycling. Well, last is cycling because it's so goddamn expensive. <laughs> Fun fact, when you have a very expensive bicycle, what do you do afterwards? You invest in insurance. I've had so many bicycles stolen over the years. I've had five, five, five bicycles stolen from me. Every time I took my bike out, I ran the risk of parts of it or the whole bike getting stolen from me. And yeah, I know what you're saying, you can buy locks and you, you, you know, lock it up properly. I know what you're saying. I know, I know exactly what you mean, but you know what? Thieves always find a way around it. Always. And insurance and theft on top of that. So you're not gonna buy just one bicycle. No, you're gonna get your bicycle stolen and you're gonna have to get another bicycle and then another bicycle. And then it will come to a point where you just stop riding a bike all together because you're just getting tired of your bikes getting stolen, the, the paranoia that it, that is involved when you have a Shimano gear or a Cannondale bike. Yep, it adds up over time. So yeah, cycling is the most expensive. Next category, we're gonna talk about learning curve, okay? Which is the easiest to learn, which is the hardest to learn? Well, this is so obvious. The easiest to learn is running, obviously, because you just put one foot in front of the other and then there are a few tweaks you have to make with your technique that a lot of people point out. Second would be cycling. I mean, how hard is it to ride a bike? I mean, we all learn when we were kids, hopefully. But if you're an adult, you've never ridden a bike before, then you can pick it up in no time. And the most hardest is swimming, obviously. I have so many students, thousands of students, adult students, young students, old students, wherever, whatever background you are come to me and they, they tell me their stories of how they struggle with swimming. Here's the thing, a lot of people avoid swimming like because once they hit that, that, that hump, right, that difficulty, right, they get water up their nose for the first time, they almost drown for the first time, they develop that fear forever. And a lot of people keep that fear in the back of their heads for the rest of their lives. And some people just never confront it. And that's the sad part. If you are afraid of the water, if you're afraid of swimming in deep water, if you don't know how to swim, if you're an adult or whatever background you are, you have to face your fears eventually, okay? You cannot avoid water for the rest of your life like most adults do. That is just a bad long-term strategy because when the time comes, when the emergency arises, like what are you gonna do when you're in a situation where you cannot swim. The time will come. Eventually, it all comes for all of us when we least expect it, you know? So I would say that if you do have this problem of swimming, don't know how to swim, click the link below, join our group, take swimming lessons from me, okay? Just get the problem solved, okay? Instead of avoiding it. And swimming is very difficult. It's a totally different language compared to running or cycling because dealing with water, water, is a beast unto itself, right? And it doesn't bow down to anybody. You have to bow down to the water. If you fight the water, the water fights back. And when the water fights back, that's when people drown, or sink to the bottom. It is a language, a different language to learn, but once you learn the language, it becomes easier. 
And once, you, once you're fluent in swimming, sky's the limit. You, you are open to a totally new world. So if you like learning a new language, you will like learning how to swim. Third category we're gonna talk about is the long term, okay? So if we're gonna do this long term, whatever sport, for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years of our lives, devoted, spent two to three times a week for the rest of our lives, which sport should we stick to? Which has the highest impact? Obviously running. Running is so stressful on our bodies, on our joints. I get aches and pains every time I run. Yes, there are ways around it. I will show you how in future videos. Second would be cycling. Cycling has a little bit of impact, but not as much as running. Why? Because we're on a bike. The bike handles most of the shock. We will ache a little bit when we cycle, especially when we're in that position where our back is just hunched over, butt sticking up in the air. But swimming is the easiest. It has the zero impact unless you do a belly flop in the water. You're working with the water, okay? When you run, you're working against the pavement. When you cycle, you're working against the trail. Long term wise, swimming is the final sport we all do when we're really old. And if you don't believe me, look at all the seniors. What are they doing? Are they cycling? Are they running outside? No, they're all in the swimming pool in the morning. They're all in the swimming pool throughout the day. They're all in the swimming pool on weekends. They're all in the swimming pool late at night. You can swim pretty much every day if you wanted to and not feel any repercussions. The only repercussions though that you would feel are due to exposure to the chemicals such as chlorine. If you snort the water up your nose, if you ingest it by accident, these are the factors that you have to consider. So would, should I, do I recommend that you swim every day? No, because of these factors. Fourth category are results. Okay, which burns the most calories in the shortest amount of time? So for me, cardio should be only maximum one hour. Okay, I don't go beyond two hours, three hours, four hours. That's just overkill. Out of all three, which burns the most calories? Obviously running. Okay, if you look at all the charts, you look at all the, the graphs, the data, it's involved. Running burns the most calories because you're working against the pavement. You're using your only your body to get you from point A to point B. So obviously running. And look at all the boxers, look at all the athletes. What do they do? First thing in the morning, they all run. They wanna build up their stamina, burn the most calories as possible. Get shredded, get fit. Running, definitely out of all three that I've tried, burns the most calories. Second place, I would say is swimming. I know you're saying like, oh, oh you look at, Previous charts, you, it shows that cycling burns more calories than swimming. Not true. Look at those charts. They're, they're factoring in swimmers that don't really push themselves. Swimmers that swim a lazy ass front crawl when they're doing long distance swimming. And I've seen these swimmers day in and day out in lap swimming sessions. They don't really push themselves and they think, oh my God, I'm burning calories, but they're not burning as much calories as they should be or they can potentially be. I really push it. I combine sprint swimming with long distance swimming. If you don't believe me, try doing butterfly. Okay, add one or two laps of butterfly and you'll feel the difference. Second place is swimming. Third, cycling, okay? I know you're saying, oh, why, why? Is like, you burn my, yeah. You got gears. Those gears make your life easier for a reason, okay? You got a low gear, you got a high gear. Why? Because you don't want to use your body to get you up that hill. No, the bike does the work most of the time. And the fifth and final factor we're gonna talk about is the sexy factor, okay? Now, a lot of people don't think about this. If you're at a party and somebody asks, Justin, what do you do for uh, staying, to stay in shape? And I say to them, I'm a swimmer. What's, what's, what goes on in your head? Like, oh, swimmers are sexy. <laughs> change the scenario. So they say, hey, Justin, what do you do to stay in shape? Oh, I'm a runner. I run. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, okay, respect, respect. But when I think of runners, what do you think of? I think of like really skinny, like really old looking people, like really frail people. And those are the people that are marathon runners, people that just do overkill in my opinion. I'm not a marathon runner. I don't want to be part of that world because I, I look at those people and what they look like, 
very little muscle and frail and uh, almost dead looking. I think of myself as like a boxer kind of runner, like athlete type of runner, not a marathon runner, okay? That's a very different niche. But when someone says to you, oh, I'm a runner, that's what you think about, right? Most of the time, you think about a marathon runner world. Runner, swimmer, eh, swimmer sexier. The final scenario, what do you do to stay in shape, Justin? Oh, I'm a cyclist. I cycle, I bicycle. Cyclists are the least sexiest in my opinion. I had to say it, I know you're saying, <laughs> but it's true. When you look at a cyclist, what do you look at? The outfits, they look pretty nerdy with the helmet on and the shades and to me, yeah, if someone says they're a cyclist, I'm like, oof, I cringe. In general, okay? I'm sorry to say this, but in general, they're pretty geeky. Out of all three, I think the sexiest are swimmers and the least sexiest are cyclists, in my opinion, okay? But you can prove me wrong if you want. Show me uh, Jason Momoa cycling, then yeah, I'll change my mind, okay? <laughs> Let's recap, okay? So we, we compared swimming, running, and cycling using five categories, affordability, which running one, uh, learning curve, which running one, long term, which swimming one, results, running one, and then sexiness, sexy factor, which swimming one. Whenever I'm on vacation, whenever I'm in a situation where I can rent a bike, I will do it on a nice sunny day. If I have a friend or a girlfriend with me, then yeah, I would ride a bike. It's fun. It's better than running or swimming, I would say, because the wind blows in your face and you look at the scenery changing. Yeah, I love cycling, but I only do it for leisure now, is what I'm saying. When I'm in leisure mode, I will cycle. When I'm in cardio, lose weight, build up stamina mode, and I run or I swim. But I recommend for you guys, if you're young, start running more. If you're old, start swimming more. And if you want the best of both worlds, then run and swim. But you just gotta develop a ratio that, that suits you. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts about these three sports. Which one you like the most? Swimming, cycling, or running? And if you really wanna learn how to swim, sign up for my online course, sevendayswim.co. Click the link down below. It teaches you how to swim from A to Z. Thousands and thousands of students have enrolled and gotten results thanks to yours truly. Join our private Facebook group for free where we help you out, give you feedback, answer your questions about swimming, help you on your journey, become part of the support group. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit the bell, bing, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.